And now, let's move on to the next speaker. Let's alternate between external speakers and speakers who are directly involved in the project, either from OP3FT or very much linked to OP3FT. Now, you can be more linked than the next two speakers. We are now welcoming Amory Grimberg, President of the Board of Directors of OP3FT and co-creator with Alexei Tamas of the Forgan Technology. But he doesn't know this yet. We'll also receive Alain Martel. Amory just told me on the side that he didn't know. But Alain will also be giving us a presentation. He's a member of the Board of Directors at OP3FT. And they will both tell us about the activity report for OP3FT for 2013. Over to you, gentlemen. Bonjour, messieurs. C'est un plaisir de vous avoir à nouveau. Good evening, gentlemen. A real pleasure to have you once again for the second edition of Four Grants Technology Conference number two. Amory and Alain, you're on the other side of the mic. For those who were at the first conference, Amory, you played the role of opening and closing the conference, and Alan joined you at the end of the second day to give us a summary of the first conference. Today, you are coming to see us for a very serious exercise, presenting the management report, the activity report. But let me reassure the audience straight away. Here, we will not present in detail the this report that was recently published. It's a part of the exercises at OP3FT to cover what it has done in 2013. But it's all about seeing what we can learn from this document with respect to OP3FT's uh, mission in the public interest and the role played by its board of directors with you as the two representatives with Alexi, who came to speak earlier. First of all, Amori and Alain. Please introduce yourselves, your career paths, and your activity, aside from being uh, directors at OP3FT, and then we can speak about the role of the Board of Directors. Hello and good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here, because it's a second edition, and I'll be there. I was at the first, and I'll be there for the third and the remaining editions. Alain, I just heard that you must speak closer to the mic. OK, speak into the mic. Sorry for interrupting you. OK, so transparency, as you said. So the activity report for 2013 is available and may be consulted by everyone because, of course, it's a part of the structuring items in the governance of OP3FT and the structure that is there to make a, a technology available to geeks. No, Alain Martel, I'm 53 years old, director of OP3FT for over two and a half years now. And I knew Amory and Alexia a long time ago because it's a long story. It's a great pleasure for me to join them on the board. And apart from that, I'm the Secretary General of an association called LIFA, the French Association of Directors. And it is there to help directors to carry out their responsibilities professionally. So this is what I'm also trying to do for OP3FT. Thank you, Alain. Amory Grambert. I was fortunate and had the honor of opening and closing the Forgans Technology Conference number one. I'll be brief. Alexi pointed out the length of the project, 14 years, and since then I've been actively involved in the Forgans project. When OP3FT was created in the endowment fund, the board was set up, and today, for this Forgans Technology Conference number two, you have the three directors initially appointed for a five-year period, Alexi, Tamas, Alain Martel, and myself. Thank you. Amorias 
just bringing up the activity report. So this document must be published every year by OP3FT to report on its activities. Here we can see the document as published at www.op3ft.org. OK, let me take a look at the table of contents. We can see that the first thing that's described here is OP3's mission. Amory, could you tell us briefly about its mission in the public interest? Very simply, the purpose of OP3FT is to hold, to promote, to protect, and to help Fogan's technology progress as an open standard that may be used free of charge by all. This baseline, the purpose of OP3FT, we find it in most of our documents and specifications because it is the main purpose of this endowment fund. As Jean, Emmanuel, and Julie pointed out, we pointed this out at the first conference to explain the legal environment for OP3FT, a French structure in light of the law of 2008 pointed out by Alexi earlier and which enabled the foundation of this type of structure. Behind this, the terms of reference of OP3 of T, we have the public interest. We are there for the public interest, and this is why we provide or we carry out work enabling us to achieve our mission as a public service. Our work is published, and this is published in our bylaws. We have Article 5 of our bylaws on work, and we'll come back to this. The roadmap of OP3FT is laid down, if I'm not mistakenly, for the next five to ten years since in this article on works, the roadmap, they recommend the way of developing so that we can be in line with the internet standards and to provide stability and sustainability. Next, we have recommendations and work on promoting Forgan's technology, work on protection, and also work on progress in others developing the Forgan's technology. I'd like to add one thing with respect to the OP3, OP3FT's uh, public service mission. One of its objectives, and this is in a document called the Four Permanent Objectives of OP3FT, I'll just mention one that is immediately linked to its public service mission. In creating OP3FT, we have the idea that an ecosystem is built on top of Rogan's technology, the ecosystem of all the players that we're inviting to the project, by and past the project is rolled out. This ecosystem promotes employment, innovation, and economic development. At the board of directors, we are thinking of nothing else aside from developing this open standard on the internet that can be used for free by everyone so that a significant number of players may draw up their, carry out their own business. I said business, but it can also be uh, not for profit activities but for everyone on the internet to be able to use innovation and to use it as they wish. One last thing with respect to our public service mission, and this is a second part of our purpose, we are also there to support activities that are also innovative of a social, educative, and cultural nature in the field of information and te communication technologies. 
We'll see that later on when we speak about the resources of OP3FT. It will be possible to do so once we have the resources to do so. And we shall see that for two and a half years now that OP3FT has been up and running, it has been devoting all 100% of its resources to its main mission, which is to develop foregun technology to promote and to protect it. But it is also true that we're also thinking as we shall see in this resources you have excess amounts, we must also be able to be geared for other innovative activities in the public interest, a virtuous circle supporting innovation, employment, and economic growth. Thank you, Amori. So social, educative, and cultural, so as to promote the initiatives facilitated by uh, technologies such as FORGANS. OP3FT is an endowment fund and founded dotation in France. Apparently, the board of directors plays a prevailing role to carry out this mission in the public interest. Can you explain briefly what is the role of the board of directors in the day-to-day -day management of OP3FT, but also the long-term performance of its activities in the public interest? Well, the law of 2008 enabled endowment fund, but we didn't want to be too specific in the French, although it is interesting for those who are listening to us and who are not in France. I think that ensures uh, that it can be easily understood and that OP3FT is there for one thing and one thing only, to ensure the sustainability of the project and to endow it with uh, a long-term view. The difference with associations where there's no need for a board of directors is that the OP3FT is run by a board of directors. In other words, there's no management board that's compulsory, for example, as compared to private companies. And therefore, the board of directors is there to manage on a day-to-day -day basis, I would say. And that's why we have members such as Alain Martel, who's not at OP3FT every day. And we're fortunate to have people who can bring in their uh, view from outside. And it is fortunate, and it is almost a necessity to have people I'm more directly in charge of day-to-day -day management of OP3FT. But in some structures, the board of directors, and Alain could add to this or contradict me if I'm mistaken, but very often it is there to set the main guidelines. But it doesn't necessarily apply on a day-to-day -day basis to decisions that it has been asked to take, or management, managerial decisions. But at OP3FT, it is the board that has the most extensive powers to ensure that OP3FT operates. The second mission, and this brings us back to something more conventional, to ensure the proper achievement of its mission for the public interest. This brings me back to Article 5 of the of the bylaws at OP3FT, and if with this you haven't understood that I'm asking you to read very feverishly, just pretend you didn't hear this. But nevertheless, we don't have that many questions, aside from the fact of constantly referring to this roadmap that we carefully drew up in its bylaws in March 2012, because OP3FT was set up on the 17th of March 2012. Thank you, Amory. Alain, through your functions at Alpha, you constantly work on the concept of what is a good board member. Now, at OP3FT, could you give us an idea about the commitment of being a director, a board member? Well, I thought before I came, a natural fact, to give you a wonderful metaphor of governance at OP3FT, it's a governance based on uh, companionship. In other words, OP3FT is building a cathedral, and for that you need 
craftsmen who build this wonderful structure stone by stone. Governance at Open 3 of TM, and you know this because we have spoken about this before. I checked my copy. We, have, we met 16 times in 2013, which is a lot for a board of directors because normally six, eight times is enough in even large companies. Why so often? Because Open 3 of T is still being built. Forgan technology is still being built, and that requires a lot of. Uh, communication between the technical teams, promotion, management, and so on and so forth. So it is true that for me, it is a craftsmanship type of governance. Uh, two and a half hours, three hours, board, meeting, board meetings, people coming in from the teams to explain what they want to do, a summary. And then we have the minutes of the meeting which lay down the decision taken. It is my belief that in the coming years, but once Forgan's technology is uh, booming, the board of directors will still remain very active, but it may be a bit less craftsmen, but more supervision, because according to Article 5, we need to be sure that it doesn't change in nature. So maybe then the governance at op 3 ft will evolve in terms of its how it operates, and new members of the board may join the board, because naturally it's a cycle. There's a time for everyone, and that's a part of uh, uh, the right form of evolution. So you must build the cathedral, but the cathedral must continue to receive those who come in, not to pray, but to develop. Fine, that's interesting. You said that the teams were invited to the board meetings to give presentations uh, or to help the board to take its decisions. Can you give us examples of presentations made to the board? Well, in the room, we have these wonderful graphs with bubbles showing you this state of progress or non-progress, but on the right track. So I think that's a very practical exercise. It, at the outset, we needed to set that up, but that was useful. And after that, you have the teams with uh, its work, with their work. I heard the word forgans in every language, not around the world, but in about 10 languages. I noted that people are saying forgans today. I tend to say forgans. In other languages, it's always interesting to hear how it is pronounced. And then the presentation of the financial statements as well, that's also important. And we're coming closer to the launch, the production phase. And I'm also waiting for that moment impatiently to see how all of this will be rolled out. So those are just a few examples showing how busy it keeps us. So the bubbles that Alan was speaking of, these in fact are graphs showing the state of progress for OP3FT because even though the board often meets, as Alan said, they don't, it doesn't have a day-to-day -day vision of the state of progress. And therefore one opportunity for the board meetings is precisely to be able to see where the teams have reached, and I'd like to thank Jérôme Delacroix for this work. He will be speaking tomorrow, not about the state of progress for OP3FT, but he'll be speaking about the context for introducing the Frogans website on the internet, and it will be exciting, believe you me. So see you tomorrow for those online for this presentation. A fine transition uh, for the budget, Amory. Alexi started speaking about this earlier. But where does OP3FT get its resources and how does it use it? If you'd like to put up the uh, activity report, the outline, we have uh, item four, resources at OP3FT. So it's uh, an endowment which is not for profit and it takes action in the public interest. OP3FT goes even further. It's forbidden at OP3FT any profitable activity, even though it may be incidental. That sounds a bit legal, I know, including the word incidental. That means that we can have a very tiny part for selling t shirts at a conference, uh, three, four, or five, but OP3FT, its funding model is based on revenue from its endowment. Endowment, therefore, which is pretty well known in the Anglo-Saxon world 
because there is a parallel we can draw with endowment funds, which largely inspired the endowment funds we have in France. OP3FT takes action in the public interest and therefore draws its resources from revenue from its endowment. And that is based on an operating license from the Frogan's core registry, which Alexis spoke about, because the Frogan's core registry is a global database that will contain Frogan's, Frogan's addresses in all languages. And we need to have a technical operator to operate it technically speaking, commercially. And as Alexis said earlier, that is the role that our company, STG Interactive, at the very beginning of the project has, ke has kept as a part of a delegation agreement to exploit the Forgan's core registry. And it is from this that OP3FT derives its resources. These resources are uh, defined in the de delegation agreement. Let me summarize. The in revenue model is the following. OP3FT receives, as a part of revenue from its endowment, 15% of sales from amounts collected by the operator of the Frogan score registry. And let me say, will be making. It's not the case today, because the Frogan score registry is currently being opened up. And in the absence of sales by the operator, uh, up to a certain stage, there's a minimum guaranteed budget allocated to OP3FT amounted to 1.8 million euros per year. The budget for OP3FT in the activity report for 2013, this is the first year that OP3FT has a full year of existence. Since in 2012, it had only nine months of existence as of the month of March. And therefore, we benefited from resources to the extent of 1.8 million euros. And they're all drawn from this delegation agreement. According to the agreements, the bylaws is something else. The endowment fund may call on public generosity and therefore receive manual uh, donations. We didn't, when it was set up, we did not wish, well, we planned this in our bylaws with respect to public generosity to be able to receive annual gifts. But that doesn't mean that in the future that OP3FT will be deriving its resources from revenue from its uh, endowment through delegated agreements and from manual uh, gifts by legal entities or natural persons who'd like to lend support to an organization such as ours. Thank you, Amory. I can see that these are conventional models for funding, public generosity, as well as revenue from a commercial activity. I think for the domain name, it works more or less the same way. I can. Stefan, maybe you can say more about it as the representative of ICANN. Well, maybe you can speak about ICANN. But since just afterwards there will be a presentation on internet governance and how Frogan's technology uh, is a part of this governance, before moving on to this and before opening up to the room, if you permit, let me just ask a first question that has been on my lips. Amori, you spoke about 2013 as the very first full year for OP3FT in 2013, 2014, just behind us. There were a lot of new actions uh, that for the outside world, uh, activities with ICANN, the extension for Amphrogance is an important step of the project. I wanted to ask both of you maybe to recap this first full year of activity in terms of what remains in your mind. Not a real a review overview like an administrative director could have, but those who are emotionally attached to the project. What are the main highlights for you? And uh, let me add one more point. 
what should we expect for 2014, 2015? Alexi, earlier, you gave uh, some of the dates for the possible launch of the Forgans websites. Is that the only highlight to be expected? I'll let Alain think. I'll give him some time. I don't know if he'll need that. Anyway, 2013 was a year of tough work. That doesn't mean 2014 and 2015 will not be years of tough work as well. Having said that, when you introduce a new software layer on the Internet, I believe that we'll have a an opportunity to more, give you a more precise uh, description of the organization of OP3FT on a day-to-day -day basis to carry out its public service mission. At the Forgan Technology Conference number one, we started presenting the teams. We had members from the technical team for software development, let's say Forgan's player in general. We also saw representatives from the legal department in charge of drawing up the charters not small charters or contract between two people. Charters for using Forgan technology. It's a unique charter that applies to all the players in the ecosystem. So it's a big chunk. You have teams in charge of drawing up technical specifications that Jean Emmanuel spoke of and their implementation as a standard on many different computer systems. You also have the promotional team that has been gaining more and more clout and uh, ramping up in 2013, and they started in 2013 to promote with the outside world. That's the first part of my answer. Naturally, you have those who are uh, moderating, keeping the teams alive in terms of organization, human resources, plus with 34 people. Stefan, you spoke about some 30 people working on the project, but on the 2013 activity report, this is not necessarily full-time equivalents. We're talking about 34 people. I think it's more like 24, 25 full-time equivalent. But we have 34 service providers, employees who work three, four days per week. So of course, they're part of the team. Plus, we have experts who work on a one-shot basis, but very regularly, in addition to contributors who also uh, contribute uh, regularly. So, Alexis, I didn't point this out before with respect to our bylaws, being a board member, that's on a volunteer basis. That applies to Allah, and he is personally involved in this adventure, um, not as a representative of IFAP, so he's also independent from that activity in his work at OP3FT. So, I'd like to point out that in 20. Uh, 12, Alexis said, setting up OP3FT wasn't easy. Transferring a part of the team to the commercial undertaking, who they readily came to OP3FT, of course, with an amazing sense of volunteer work. But we also have constant recruitment abroad. We have lots of uh, employees who have been joining us from outside of France. It's also culturally important for the Forgans technology. So 2013 was truly a year of tough work. And personally, it makes me feel extremely humble. It is a wonderful task, an extraordinary task. But at the same time, it's extremely important. And therefore, we must rest humble before the complexity of the ambition of building open standards on the internet. I won't say anything unpleasant, but it's not about this writing a proprietary solution, even though you have wonderful such solutions everywhere, but it wasn't about building a proprietary solution for the French market for P3FT. The second thing for this, I'll um, pass the microphone over to you, Alan, is that at the end of 2013, we signed with uh, ICANN, the regulator of the internet, we signed uh, as part of a a uh, case that we filed for the delegation of a new dot frogans uh, uh, extension, which we spoke about at the last conference. Uh, so about this, we signed in December 13, um, 2013, the uh, register contract. And the great news is that this uh, dot frogans uh, um, application will allow us to secure the whole layer from a technical point of view. So lots of hard work went into this, and the teams that did a tremendous job, they continue to do so, and, but I'm talking about 2013, 
The other thing was the signature with the signing with ICANN and the start of promotional activities towards the uh, IP uh, uh, advisors, consultants. Uh, uh, now, I'm not talking about 2014. Um, if I uh, focus on 2013, it's because it was approved. The, the activity report was approved by the board of directors on the 20th of June. 2014 after the first broken stick. No, sorry, I was a bit long. Ella, so a bit of perspective now. Well, first I confirmed that uh, 2012 and 13 were very tough. I, I remember in uh, a meeting with all the teams to start thinking about the about the uh, building this cathedral. I like this metaphor. And at the end of uh, 2013, we saw where the cathedral will be uh, standing. It's in the middle of the uh, internet worldwide village. Uh, the um, Neve and the rest will be built in 2015, I suppose. But anyway, uh, uh, everyone, Amohi Alexi, had um, ideas and going forward, they realized that things had not been uh, foreseen and they need to be tackled, um, not so much from a technical point of view, but all the legal uh, and uh, IP relational uh, aspects, that takes a lot of work because uh, from the moment you, uh, you, you, you work at the world level, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit daunting. Now, we're slightly uh, lagging behind, but uh, while the directors are on stage, maybe you'd like to ask questions from them. Um, I cannot see uh, if you have any questions. I can't see your hands being raised. Are there any questions for Anna or Amogi about this uh, um, activity report. I can't see any hands. Uh, it seems that you were very clear. So let me thank you for this. And uh, I think we can all give them a hand. This. Uh,